First, we need to prepare the materials and accessories we need. Then we need to take out the threads from the center of the yarn, not the side. Before crocheting, we also need to learn the basic way to start the stitches. First, we need to imitate the method in the video to create a wire knot first. Note that the knot does not need to be tightened too much. When it is done, it needs to be the same as in the video, only the shorter end of the yarn can be pulled, the longer end of the yarn cannot be pulled, this is the correct knot. Then follow the video to learn the correct way to hold the crochet hook. Then put the crochet hook through the knot you just made and tighten the loop, you need to be careful not to tighten it too much here either. Finally, we will follow the video to learn how the yarn is wrapped around the hand. Then we need to crochet two thread knots, called chain stitch. At this point, you need to watch carefully how the crochet hook is wrapped around the yarn. Then hook the wound yarn out of the loop you just made. When finished, you will find an opening similar to a V-shape. Next you need to learn how to control the size of the V-hole with your fingers. To make crocheting easier and more beautiful, we usually need to crochet the V-hole size the same size. So now we crochet the second knot and we need to control it with our fingers to make the V-shaped hole as big as the first one. After crocheting, you now have two V-shaped openings. This way we learn the basic way of starting the needle. Next we learn the first very common crochet stitch called single crochet, which we abbreviate as SC. Before we start crocheting, we need to control the size of this loop on top of the crochet hook to the same size as the two Vs we just crocheted. Then you need to pass the crochet hook through the first V opening and then hook the yarn with the crochet hook and crochet out this V opening. Then learn the method in the video and use your fingers and crochet hook to control the size of the two loops to the same size as well. Finally, we hook the yarn again and pass it through both loops. This completes one crochet of the SC stitch. You need to notice that after each time we crochet a SC stitch, there will be a V-shape on its side. One important point to remember here is that we need to mark the first V in each loop with a paper clip in order to easily find where to start crocheting in the next loop. Then the first loop needs to be crocheted a total of 6 SC stitches, and now it's crocheted once, so we need to continue crocheting 5 more SC stitches. You can also check the stitch shorthand tips in the upper right corner of the video. The small icon on the left represents the loop being crocheted in the video, and the number inside the brackets on the right represents how many Vs there should be after this loop is crocheted. Now crochet two SC stitches, so there are two Vs in total.
It is important to note that you should count the number of corresponding Vs after each crochet loop to see if they are correct. If you find that the hole in the middle is too big after crocheting, it will affect the beauty of the product, so we need to tighten the extra yarn on the back, and the hole will automatically become smaller. This way we have finished crocheting the first loop. Next we will learn the second very common crochet stitch called increase stitch, which we abbreviate as ink. Since we marked the position with a paperclip on the first loop, our first crochet on the second loop will start from this marked position. However, the ink stitch is a crochet of 2 SC stitches inside one V-shaped hole. So we need to crochet 2 SC stitches in this position marked by the paperclip. Once we have crocheted a V for the second loop, as previously stated, we need to mark the first V in each loop with a paperclip. Now we need to crochet one more SC stitch inside this hole. This completes one crochet of the ink stitch, and there will be two Vs on the side. Then we follow the stitch shorthand tip in the upper right corner, stating that we need to crochet a total of six ink stitches in this loop, but we have just completed one, so we still need to crochet one ink stitch in sequence inside the remaining five V-shaped holes.
After crocheting, you need to count the 12 Vs to make sure you are crocheting correctly. This completes our second loop of crochet. To make it easier to understand, let's have a brief explanation in the form of pictures. The numbers in the circles in the diagram represent the serial numbers of the V-shaped. As shown in the picture, the second loop should be crocheted 6 times ink stitch, so we need to crochet 2 SC stitches inside each V, so there are 12 Vs in total in the second loop. You will notice that the stitch shorthand hint changes when you crochet to the third loop. It means crochet a SC stitch inside the first V first, then go to the second V and crochet an ink stitch inside, then a total of 6 repetitions of this combination are needed, so the third loop should have 18 Vs. Next, let's continue crocheting for the third loop. If you are new to crocheting this grouping stitch, it will be easy to forget which group you are crocheting, so you can prepare a paper and pen and write G1 to G6 like this in the video. Where G1 to G6 on the paper represents groups 1 to 6. Then we crochet that group and record it on that line. When we finish crocheting the first set of the first SC stitch, we need to mark it with a paper clip because it is the first V of the third loop. Once you have crocheted a group, record it as shown in the video. This will give us a clear idea of which group to crochet now and not get confused. When you are skilled enough to crochet you can do it without recording and without making mistakes.
Next, let's move on to crochet loop 4. Then, according to the stitch tips in the upper right corner, it should be noted that the 2SC inside the fourth loop is not equal to the ink. The correct one is to crochet the SC stitch inside the first V, then continue to crochet the SC stitch inside the second V, and finally crochet the ink stitch inside the third V. Now let's follow the video to finish crocheting this loop. Note that after crocheting this loop, you need to turn the product inside out and continue crocheting, because the texture inside is more beautiful, so we need to use this side as the display side. Once we have crocheted this loop, please follow the stitch tips to complete loops 5 to 13 alone. Next we learn a third very common crochet stitch called decrease stitch, which we abbreviate to DC. 
We need to crochet the SC stitch twice first according to the stitch tips in the upper right corner. Now we'll start crocheting the DC stitch, we'll mimic the way we did in the video and then crochet it. In this way, we complete a DEC stitch, and then we continue to follow the video to complete the loop. After we have crocheted one DEC stitch, continuing to crochet other stitches requires crocheting in this full V-shape as highlighted in the video.
Once you have learned the DEC stitch, follow the stitch tips to complete 14 to 17 loops alone. The shape after crocheting should look like the one in the video. After crocheting 17 rounds, we will start installing the eyes and filling the cotton. We need to use the bottom of the product as the top of the head. Then install the eyes at the position of the 7th to 8th circle and the two eyes need to be separated by 5 holes. Then fill the cotton. After the filling is finished, we follow the stitching tips in the upper right corner to finish the 18th circle. An 8 inch length of yarn needs to be set aside for stitching after crochet is completed.
Then we sewed with a sewing needle imitating the way in the video, requiring a total of 8 stitches. Then pull it tight. Then pass through the sewing center and cut the yarn. This completes the crochet of the body. Next we crochet the two ears using the stitches we have learned earlier, following the stitch tips. The shape after crocheting should be the same as in the video. When finished, you will need to set aside 8 inches of yarn for stitching. Next, we will learn how to sew. In order to make this hole more beautiful, we need to make an extra V shape before sewing, otherwise the shape will be a regular shape, please copy the video for the making method. This is the V-shape we just made with the sewing needle. Then we need to sew the ears on the left and right side of the first loop, respectively.
Finally, just cut off the excess yarn. This way we have sewn one ear and we still need to sew the other ear in the same way. Finally, we follow the method used in the video to make the nose and beautify the ear.